Good afternoon, my name is Kurt Gessler and I'm going to go over a quick Photoshop tutorial on how to make a header for your website. I will be using Photoshop CS 5.1 today. I have my two images already loaded. The end product will be to make a single image out of two images with some text on it. This isn't ideal for the web, but for the purposes of this exercise, it should suffice. I've decided that this is going to be my background image and that the mugshot of Drew Peterson will be the foreground. So first, to get the dimensions I want, I'm going to use the marquee tool, which is preset for my 980 by 160. And I'm going to take a section of it, maybe this section right here. I'm going to go up to Image, Crop. You'll see I get the piece that I want, 980 by 160. Let me uh, deselect this here. Go back to my image here of Drew Peterson, and I'm going to use the Select tool. And the goal is to be um, focusing on just Drew and not the cinder blocks in the background. So I'm going to start to color the image that I want. You'll see that Photoshop is very smart and it starts to make some guesses as to what I want to include in this and what I don't want to include. I have my brush set at about 17 pixels, you'll see. That should be relatively crisp. Once you get it pretty close, I like to use the magnify tool and get in even a little closer. Now we don't have to be perfect, you'll see, because some of him will not be in our image plane. And we can always clean this up a little bit with the eraser later, but it's best to start out with as good a sample as possible. Hair is always a very tricky part. You see I've gone to from plus to minus with the alt key so I am adding as well as subtracting so if you make a little boo-boo it is certainly not catastrophic and then once you're about as close as you want to be and this is pretty close I'm going to hit Command C, create a new palette, and you'll see it already creates a new file similar to the specs that you've copied your information to conveniently. And that's what we end up with right there with Drew. Now I'm going to go in, zoom in, and do a little bit of cleanup work with the eraser. I'm not going to go too crazy here, but I'm going to take some information that we don't want out of this. Now I have my eraser tool set, you see at about 21. I'm going to soften it a little bit here to give it kind of a better edge. The top of his head will not be in the field, so I'm not really that worried right now. Uh, his ear is a little unusual there, so I'm just going to soften that edge as well, too. Again, with the eraser, you don't have to be right on it. You can be near it and get what you want. Shirt line seems pretty good. A little unusual there. Again, just want to soften the edge. Uh, zoom out and see if that's good enough. and. I think it is. So there are two ways you can copy and remove this. You can turn off the background as I did right over here and you can select all and move it. I find frankly it's just as easy to grab the layer you want. You see I have layer one selected here and just drag and drop that over there. And I have the transform controls right over here showing. So then 
It's a little on the large side. I'll just scale it down. I'm holding down shift to constrain con proportions as I'm doing this. Put this over here. Make him a little smaller, perhaps. And now you see why I wasn't really that worried about the hair so much, because it's out of frame as it is. Now, I'm using the cursor controls to do fine movement. You can use the mouse as well. I find it's easier to use cursor controls with the move tool to achieve the effect that you want. Sometimes when dealing with layered images, it helps to make them pop a little bit. I'm going to double click on the layer here. You can add a drop shadow if you want to. As you can see on our image, really didn't do terribly much. You can increase the distance a little bit here, but since the background image is so dark, it really doesn't do anything. So, hypothetically, that wouldn't really be a way to do it. I'm just going to turn that off here. Another option you could do is go um, edit stroke, maybe put like a three-point stroke around the entire image. Makes it pop a little bit, not fond of that color really. I'm gonna undo, see if we can uh, achieve anything more pleasing than that. Maybe try just a white around it, see how that looks. Deselect that, it looks a little better. Now, the color palette for the website I'm using is a lot of browns and oranges and yellows. That's pretty good, but maybe I would decide that I need it to be maybe a little more orange. You could do um, image photo filter, and you could do like a warming filter perhaps. And you could see in the background I've already brought that kind of some oranges out there. I really want to orange it up. I could do straight orange. I could do sepia, perhaps, to kind of bring that out. I think I like that 100% density sepia right there. And that kind of tones down the background a bit and making Mr. Peterson's mugshot pop a little more. Now, for the text, I will go to the text tool. I'm on Helvetica, bold 12 point right now. And I just drew Peterson, type that out. That probably is a little small, go up to 18 for now. Move that over here into this field. Honestly, still probably a bit too small. And again, this isn't a very web-friendly way of doing things because um, most browsers aren't going to read text that's part of an image. This is all invisible to them. So you would normally want to find a different way to accomplish this if you're worried about things like search engine optimization. Again, but for the purposes of this exercise, which is more Photoshop driven, this will work just fine. And then do a kind of a subhead here. Obviously a little too big. Grab all that, knock that down to 14 points maybe. Let's see how this ends up here. Grabbing the move tool, sliding it over. Probably a bit too big for that right now. So we'll, we'll try 12 point. And I think this is closer to what we're going to be doing. Again, I'm using the cursor controls for this finer movement here and there we have it now if I didn't like the white which might go with the three-point stroke I put around drew I could take a <coughs> sample using the sample tool maybe of something that's in this color palette maybe a bit of this yellow you see that's sampled my color right there so now if I go to my text tool and highlight that You'll see it's matched that pretty well. I'll do the same thing here. Now I've accomplished that. So all together looks okay.
And there we have it. A quick header for your website. You saw a quick Photoshop filter, a few tricks, how to do a cutout, and how to do your background image. Now, if you're going to be doing this kind of project, always make sure that you save a unflattened Photoshop version. I'll just call this Drew Header. Before you save your JPEG or PNG file, because if you're ever going to do any adjustments to it, color or whatever, you would not be able to do any finer edits if you just saved a flattened version. Again, thanks for listening, and I hope you got a few tricks out of this.